So I think slowly we can start. Again, warm welcome from my side, Thorsten Hultzmann. I will guide you through the next 60 minutes. The topic of today's IDSA live session, the road to become a partner in a data ecosystem and to be precisely the road to become a partner in a data sovereign ecosystem because data sovereignty, as you all know, is the guiding principle of data spaces. And IDSA started already a couple of years ago with defining and setting the rules of data sovereign ecosystems and principles to create data spaces. So I'm very happy that uh, all of you are interested in learning and getting to know the status quo of the IDSA certification as certification is a very important way to deliver and to make sure that data sovereignty in a trusted framework can take place. So the agenda of today uh, is, um, well, is uh, filled with three of my colleagues with their valuable inputs. Usually we have um, a lot of speakers from our IDSA membership base or other related communities projects. But today as the certification is uh, very important and also a core of IDSA, um, we decided to have exclusively um, colleagues from the IDSA head office. So I'm very happy um, that uh, the CEO of IDSA, Lars Nagel, will give us an introduction and also setting the scene and describing the framework of data sovereign ecosystems. Afterwards, my colleague Sebastian Steinbus, the CTO and lead architect of IDSA, will explain what IDSA certification really means. And then Natalia Simon, project manager at IDSA head office, will explain the road and the way how to get certified um, in the relation of IDSA. Again, my name is Thorsten Hultzmann. For the last four people who just joined in the last uh, 30 seconds, I'm the CFO of IDSA and I'm welcoming you very warmly. So let's get started and I hand over to my colleague uh, Lars Nagel. Uh, Lars, I think you uh, prepared a little bit to set the scene and to introduce us to the topic and also uh, to explain why IDSA certification is uh, very much in the core of European data spaces. Yeah, thank you for the kind introduction. Thank you for the kind introduction, Torsten. I hope everything is, uh, is all right. You can hear me, you can see my slides. Just to make yes, sure. Everything is fine. Thank you, thank you. So good morning also from my side. Um, you can see here, uh, well, you can, but I can't. <laughs> um, you can see here the slide, which I presented already during the winter days in, in Paris at the end of last year. And uh, this was uh, a preview to this year. And I'm really happy that we uh, achieved uh, most of our targets, uh, although this was really a cumbersome year, and uh, that we are now in the situation to start with IDS certification. Um, so we are um, on the road for nearly five years now, and we made uh, on a consensual base with our members and organizations uh, being part of IDSA, um, uh, a lot of agreements and, and concepts how to, um, well, make data sovereignty and data sharing really happen. And, um, well, you know all the documents which are out there, the technical uh, foundation, our reference architecture model, but a lot of uh, uh, more, uh, comprehensive documents on implementation, on technical details are uh, available and our certification strategy. And so we can call this uh, um, point in time, uh, 
the, the really pivotal moment where we move from trial and error to commercial use. And uh, that is exactly where we have to provide um, all the companies out there which want to use data sovereignty and IDS concepts, um, we want to provide them the, the guarantee that data sovereignty is really delivered when it's written outside at the box that uh, data sovereignty is inside. So, um, and that is what it's all about in, in certification. So um, we have to come up with really a reliable, sustainable and resilient uh, solution for, um, uh, for the market uptake of IDS concepts for commercial use. And uh, that is what we want to present right now. Um, I guess it's ready to use, so to say, and um, most of the things are in place. Uh, the absolutely core element to, to make data sharing in a data sovereign manner really happen is the IDS connector. And um, this IDS connector is now ready for use. Uh, you can find it uh, uh, as open source uh, solution uh, on, on our GitHub IDSG. Um, there are a lot of companies out there which already implemented an IDS connector in their uh, ecosystem endeavors. Uh, and you can already, uh, uh, well, uh, purchase an IDS connector um, for, for commercial and active use. So, um, well, business transactions uh, following data sovereignty, they are available. Um, and, well, with this uh, core component, with this uh, secure gateway, with this IDS connector in place, um, data sharing is, is made uh, available um, and we also added the governance rules for the transactions then being made and uh, then the last step is uh, to, to add the certification so that you can really be sure that there's a third party attestation that uh, the components which are used to share your very valuable good data uh, are uh, perfectly fine according to the reference architecture and according to all the criteria which are defined and not only the component but also the runtime environment in which these components uh, well live so the organization which runs a connector so we have to take this into consideration this will be um, explained later on and therefore uh, we can now really establish diversity for this. I'm, I'm really happy to, to move on into this new era. Um, so what, what have we been done and, and what is the, uh, the state, state of play right now? Um, well, today we're talking about certification. Um, we, we can now start with IDS certified. Um, uh, it starts with uh, evaluation facilities which perform the act of certification uh, and then we need you uh, and, and, and companies out there, the users to, um, well, uh, implement connectors which are certified and, and other components. So this is about certification. But we have arranged this year a lot more. We have the rule book uh, in place which defines not, uh, well, next to the technical arrangement the rule book defines the operational and uh, maintenance aspects of data sharing. So, okay, how can we really onboard? How can I connect to, um, to a broker uh, and, and other services? How can I make use of this essential services? So how can I retrieve a digital identity? How can I uh, 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 retrieve the dynamic token to know who's the counterpart when data sharing and so on and so on? Uh, the processes uh, and, and the service level agreements, they are um, described uh, in the, in the so-called rulebook. We, um, well, made our first experiences throughout this year uh, with uh, 20 or 20 plus use cases and uh, more than 40 companies um, in the launching coalition, which is our central activity uh, and alliance of the willing, able and acting companies which uh, started this year um, 
and, and said and stated, we want to come up by the end of the year with commercial solutions where IDS is inside. And I can tell you, um, uh, they were successful. There are a lot of things out there um, in different domains. So um, in the manufacturing domain, in the mobility domain, in the logistics domain, um, and you will learn and uh, see this uh, uh, through our social media channels uh, and, and uh, everything out there. Um, then in parallel, we are preparing the design principles uh, for, um, for data spaces um, as, a, as a core uh, part of the European strategy for data. Um, as a well facilitator for the digital single market and the European data space. Um, uh, IDS uh, is an indispensable element of the European data space and uh, it defines the, some generic principles for data spaces that can be taken up by all data spaces endeavors out there. And then you can add more domain specific and even use case specific uh, things to this, but what we do here is uh, we provide the generic aspects which, um, well, crashes down the data silos and makes, um, well, interoperability between data spaces really happen. So it's a, um, a very important element of the European strategy for data. And, well, in the same sense, IDS is at the core of Gaia X, this large European project, I think you are all aware of this, um, which combines um, well data in motion and all the issue of a very dynamic data sharing in uh, more and more vital uh, ecosystems with uh, changing participants in these ecosystems. We combine it with the question of, okay, where do I store data? Um, so all this uh, cloud edge continuum uh, for uh, storing and processing data. Um, this large pan-European and uh, global endeavor Gaia X um, um, is, is important and takes up IDS as a as a the, the core and the standard for for data sharing. And therefore, we are um, from the very beginning part of of Gaia X. So. All of this you can experience uh, throughout the next weeks. Um, a lot will happen. Um, there are some events uh, this month, the next month, and uh, throughout the next uh, three or four months, we will have uh, a series of, of uh, events all over Europe due to Corona. We, we decided to spread this um, and uh, we called them the IDSA Insight Chats, uh, and we will only invite you to uh, join these sessions, uh, which will be announced on our website and by our partners and uh, uh, members of the association. A uh, very important thing which I want to highlight is we have uh, at the beginning of December the data sharing winter school and, and I'm really happy this is a top level uh, uh, winter school endeavor for uh, uh, professionals uh, and um, you can uh, apply for this. Um, yeah, so um, I want to give a short uh, motivation why um, certification is so important and why we need it. So we, we all strive for data sovereignty. Well, that is a given. Um, and we know that we have data treasures at our hands uh, in the basement of our companies. Um, so we know that we are talking about high value. Data is an economic asset and this is important for companies. So it's something which we have to handle very carefully and which we have to safeguard. So, well, we know that and have to make it, um, uh, well, uh, being independent, like uh, like a kid. So you you um, uh, you educate your children and then you make them ready for the outside world. And uh, that is the same. What we have to do with um, uh, with with data, you know, we, we have to make them uh, resilient in, in, in such a way that they can be moved in such an ecosystem that data can be shared, matched with other data sets. And uh, we have to make sure that the outside world uh, is, is created uh, in, in such a manner that we can 
uh, a very positive minded let our children go. So, um, and, and therefore we have to make sure that uh, we come up with data spaces which are really trustworthy and then they can be the core for prospering data economy. And uh, these are not only organizational aspects, but we need more and more also technical aspects. So we are talking about a, um, a data sharing infrastructure and uh, therefore we need some, some elements. We, uh, we have essential services like digital identities and certification, what we talk about today, and we need some uh, technical components, and I already mentioned it, the IDS connector is uh, the, the core element to be used when you really want to um, well benefit from data sovereignty. Um, this is a piece of software which can be implemented everywhere and different solutions you can see here, mobile device or client service solution, whatever, on an edge device. Um, and we describe this in a reference architecture as a formal standard and also uh, we have um, uh, implementation patterns uh, in place, how to realize this. And today we talk about, okay, how can we certify this and how does it work? And uh, then we can really enjoy uh, interoperability between companies, between data spaces, between domains. Um, we can be sure that there's trust while sharing data between different security domains. So we have different clouds, different ecosystems. I can share data and I, and I can be sure that only this happens to my data, what I want to happen to my data. And well, we describe the governance, how this process of data sharing and joint value creation takes place. And well, then we end up with data spaces um, and all data endpoints are connected by an IDS connector. And the certification is exactly about, well, how do we have to build and uh, implement these blue dots on this slide, the IDS connector, and that is what it's all about um, on certification. And um, I'm happy now to, um, well, give the word to my dear colleague Sebastian Steinbos, CTO of IDSA, to do the deep dive on IDS certification and the next step we're going to take uh, on this issue. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you Lars so far. Um, so let me check one thing. So now you should be able to see my slides as well. So yeah, glad to be here today um, and thank you for the warm words uh, Thorsten and Lars. And um, so I want to explain a little bit on uh, yeah, what does IDS certification mean? Um, or maybe the better title would be, <clears throat> why are we here today? Um, so what changed recently uh, that we have to do a webinar on IDS certification? Well, we took, put something in place. We are getting IDS really to an airborne state um, by installing a certification body. Um, that is new that uh, and is required for the whole certification scheme that we have defined and worked on during the last years uh, to set up the IDS certified approach. So for today, we started uh, with a certification body that is placed in the IDSA support organization. This is a midterm result. We are still on the way to uh, enable it even more official, but we want to get it up and running. And the certification body is really the bridge between everything that we have to do to enable IDS certification. Um, so what we do really want to do is we want to certify applicants. So you have a connector or you're an organization and you really want to step into this uh, data ecosystem empowered by IDS. So what you do have to do, you have to apply for it and you have to show to the world, at first to a neutral evaluator, but to the world, to every participant you want to communicate with, that you're a trustworthy party. And this is done in the IDS world via IDS certification. Um, that means someone as an applicant coming with a connector or with this operational environment has to show to an evaluation facility, a neutral and independent facility, that they will check if you do really hit all those rules that we have defined um, to show your trustworthiness and your security according to different uh, test profiles. So this is done in a process 
um, in the uh, evaluation process where components and organizations will be evaluated and if this is done the certification body finally checks the evaluation if everything went well and then you will receive a stamp a certificate that shows that you are a trustworthy and reliable party in such a data space um, but it's not only paper this information will be shown to everyone who is interested in during runtime when someone ex wants to exchange data with you as a data provider or a data uh, or a data user you can see transparently uh, your security profiles so how trustworthy you are and not only based on the self assessment i swear that i did it uh, uh, according to the rules but someone independently has checked this and this is really new and this is important to set up this uh, yeah, these data spaces so I already mentioned that we do have two different types of certificates or certification approaches here. Uh, the operational environment for the organization and the core component certificate on the other side. Um, so the operational environment uh, certification or evaluation uh, shows that you are really able to run an IT system in a secure and trustworthy manner. And the core component certification shows that the systems, the software you're using is really developed and maintained in a secure way. I love to say to this best practice and so in good and secure software engineering. But let's dig a little bit into the details of this. So for the operation and environment, uh, we take a look at different aspects um, of how your operations uh, of your IT systems really run. Do you have a proper asset management in place? For example, media shall be disposed uh, securely when no longer used or required. So, so, okay, someone should do this definitely, but can you prove it? Uh, we talk about communication security. So groups of information services, users information systems shall be segregated on networks. Okay, something we should really do, I think. About identity and ass assess management. Um, um, about organizations and um, information security. So, for example, information security shall be addressed in a project management, regardless of the type of a project, or so in every project management. About physical security, do you have locks at your server room stores? And can only those poop people who are allowed to assess those rooms? And, of course, about security incident management. So we all know that when it comes to security, we cannot be 100% secure, but we have to work on this properly. So do you have an incident management process in place that really ensures so continuous quality and con continuous improvement? So this is what you do have to show to the world, that I am really able to run such systems that really take care of the data of other people because that is what we are talking about it's not only you are doing it in a defensive way to protect yourself but you have to show to someone else that you are able to take care of the data that someone gave to you and this is the important point here when we look at the core components um, we mixed together best practices and uh, added the things that we see that are required. Um, we took as a foundation the IEC 62443, or at least parts of this, um, to make this a foundation for security requirements. Um, IEC 62443 also provides different security levels. There is not one clear mapping of one security level in IEC 62443 to the security profiles we have in IDS. Um, but we have something like a vector and a, vector and a clear mapping uh, on the different attributes here. And we defined additional requirements um, that go on top uh, of this best practices for secure software engineering. Uh, of course, it's about uh, communication security. How do you really do ciphers and crypto, uh, remote integrity verification, and also remote attestation when it comes to higher security profiles? Of course, the IDS certification has to address the proper implementation or realization of data usage control. This is an important aspect about the IDS architecture, that we have a concept in place to not only do assess control, you can assess my data or you can't assess my data, but you can put policies, usage policies on top of, the, of your data and the data consumer is stick to those rules and can enforce those rules. So you really enlarge your control rights. So, and this is tested, if the system that you are using can do this really or not. The information model, the IDS information model, 
is one of the core assets of the IDS. How to describe a data as an asset, as commodity. So not only talking about, so I have an endpoint and I can send or receive a message. It's far more than that. It really describes the trustworthy aspect. So how trustworthy are the participants um, in the IDS. So the outcome of the IDS certification is described there, but also data described as a commodity. So the usage policies, pricing, for example, and other obligations that are stick to this. Um, the core mechanisms of identity and assess management, uh, certificates, X509 certificates, the proper use of the, of the DAPS tokens, for example, all those things have to be implemented and they are checked inside the certification. Um, also the proper use of the broker integration so that you can really offer your data services to the market. Um, lower uh, level things like operator, operating system security and of course audit logging which is an important aspect in IDS. You really need a proof, um, an auditable proof that you did something or that you did something not. So these are the core elements here and uh, because we do have so many different domains and so many different use cases. Of course, we made different kind of profiles uh, for both for operational environment and also for the core components. And we also specified what is a minimal, minimum level for something uh, and what is an optional or a should be um, level for something. So here on the left hand side, you see the different roles that we do have in the IDS. And uh, the entry level, member level and central levels are the levels for the operational environment. So you could step in there very, very easy. As a data provider or a data consumer, you can step in with a lower security level. And this is shown transparently to everyone that wants to make business with you in such a data space. That means you can sovereignly decide based on the certification and based on the mechanics specified in the IDS reference architecture, if you want to trust this person or not, I have data with a high value. There comes someone along that has only a low trustworthiness. I can decide I don't want to share the data with you or I will share only aggregated data with you or whatever is the result of your, uh, of your thinking would be. And uh, of course, if you want to be a provider of the essential services, identity provider services, for example, or those base services like a broker, of course, your trustworthiness should be higher because you are really you do really have an important and required and mandatory role into the IDS. So and how can we really safeguard um, that the rules that we create are really enforced and implemented and realized? So on the right hand side you see the basic structure of how IDSA envisions to really create this trust. The question is always, so where does trust come from? What we do in the IDS Association, in the International Data Spaces Association, inside our working groups, we are creating the reference architecture model. We are creating the certification scheme, consensus-based. So all the members of the IDSA support this endeavor and it's agreed. So we make the rules, but we do not want to enforce the rules. We do put in place a neutral and independent certification body that and executes the certification scheme. So the certification body uh, has basically two tasks, to approve evaluators, to check if an evaluating facility is really capable uh, to conduct those evaluations. And the second thing, they are there to manage and to support, to witness the evaluations of the applicants. And Eventually, they check the evaluation that has been done again by a neutral third party, by an independent and neutral third party that conducts the evaluation. And the certification body checks if the work was done accordingly or not. And if they provide a certificate to the applicants. So, and this is where we are now. We have to approve now our evaluation facilities. We have some in place that are uh, in the starting blocks uh, to continue with certification. And here are we to really set up this whole structure. If we dig a little bit deeper into those uh, different uh, security levels or levels and of the operational environment of, and of the components, you can see that in each we have three different levels. An easy one with a lower assurance on the operational environment based on a self-assessment. Um, you have to show um, that you have a management system in place which is recommended uh, for all the different roles, um, only for the identity provider or not. Um, or you do have really a even a higher uh, level of assurance by providing a control framework. This is based on ISO 27001. So 
things that are typically already in place in an organization that runs IT systems can reuse their existing certificates uh, and get an operational environment IDS certified seal uh, based on that. When we look at the core components, we do have on the one hand side the different security profiles, the base security profile, the trust security profile, which provides more trustworthy systems, and the trust plus or managed trust security profile. So, and uh, to achieve those, there are again different assurances level. You have again an easy step in based on a checklist approach uh, that you can show your trustworthiness for the base security profile. Based on a checklist, you will not be able to provide a trusted connector. To provide the proof that you can run a base connector, a trust connector, or a trust plus connector, you have to at least a concept review. That really means that an experienced evaluator takes a deeper look into your connector or other core component, broker, whatever it may be. Now they take a deeper look, make real in-depth testing and review things. Or if you really want to show, hey, I'm really super secure, you can do a high security, a high assurance evaluation. Um, this not directly makes sense for the base security profile. Um, so this is really a feature for the uh, higher security profiles for Trust and Trust Plus. So here are the different features you can go to. And of course, the higher the assurance level is, the higher is the effort for you to set up your operational environment or to build your core component. Uh, and of course, a review is also more complex and more comprehensive. So where are we now and where are we going to go? Um, we have basically four different streams we are working on. We are here today because we have set up the certification body. We can now start with the second thing, with the approval of evaluators. If you want to prepare for all those things, the world for famous ideas readiness assessments is still there. We still have evaluation facilities that support ideas readiness assessment. And this is important because if you want to prepare for a certification, you have a component or you have an operation environment and you want to prepare for this, this is an assessment that helps you to assess, will I be able to be successful in a certification or do I still have to do some homework? So this is really a supportive action for you uh, to step into the certification. So we are now starting to approve evaluators. As already mentioned, we do have uh, at least five of them today that started the approval process. And I expect even more to join from different countries uh, in, all over Europe and all over the world. If we have done so, uh, we can really set up the evaluation process. So there is still some preparational work to do. Um, the so-called test profiles, um, that is something that is still work in progress, which uh, where our evaluation facilities are working on high pressure with, with uh, or on. Um, and we will have it in place during the next weeks, at least for the base profile. And the trust profile, the trust plus profile will follow afterwards. So, but this is something that we can really do and start with to, to conduct the first evaluations. And of course, we are going to communicate this today uh, with our first webinar. And of course, we are going to put all our, our evaluators in place and uh, present them to all of you and create the contact uh, for you so that you know who you can talk to and who you can work with. We will come uh, back to you with the announcement of all those live sessions uh, later on. And uh, if you have immediate questions, of course, you can ask today. Um, but if you have uh, questions after our webinar today, we have put in place the IDSA support office uh, as a single point of contact for you um, um, when it comes to the IDSA support organization or how to really get into IDS certification. Um, so we are taking the task and duties for the certification body. Um, all those things and all the other responsibilities uh, here are defined in the IDSA rulebook, which we have finalized so far. It is currently under review and will be publicly available in a few weeks. Um, but we have contact partners for you. My dear colleagues, Julia Giussani and Natalia Simon, uh, they are for today our support office and you can contact them at every time they will support you and they will guide you through the process to get IDS certified and to get a valuable partner in the IDS ecosystem. And with these words, I would love to hand over to you, Natalia, to get a little bit more deeper insights into that. 
Sebastian, thank you very much. I need to interrupt because uh, there is one question appearing, which is perfectly fitting to the input you just gave. Um, cool. So in the chat, uh, if you allow, I will just, uh, I just read it. Um, and there are, um, there's a question that the description of the evaluation facility is um, not completely clear. Could you maybe again describe what role an evaluation facility place and for instance give an example uh, who could be an evaluation facility i think uh, this would uh, briefly answer the question but of course uh, to the one who raised uh, this question we can also bilaterally inform you in more detail about this yes but um, maybe it was not perfectly clear so of course i can clarify this um, because it's it's, it's uh, really important so the evaluation facility is the one that really conducts the evaluation. So your partner um, that has a test bed, a test center, where you can go with your connector. I will uh, go first with an uh, example for the core component. You have a connector and you can go there, uh, connect your connector into their test bed, and they will run several tests as specified in our criteria catalogs, as specified in the resulting um, test tooling and check if you have really done everything that you should have done based on the criteria catalogs. <clears throat> this could be automated testing, for example, um, or one example, the so-called DAPS token, the dynamic attribute token. Um, so are you able to produce or receive one and to de decode such a thing? Or do you have an IDS information model, a self-declaration in place, and can you offer it uh, properly? So this is something that can be tested basically script-based or automated. And those evaluation facilities will have a test center, a test tooling uh, to really test this on, on an automated basis. And there are other things <clears throat> that are more you know, scenario-based testings. So again, coming back to the test specification, there is a clear result that if you do something, something else should happen. Um, so of course, this is something we test uh, automatically, but what if the test profile would say so if you receive a message with data inside you may not put those data into a plain log file you're not allowed to so um, so it's a test that you can not easily do automatically so someone has to check look into the system and see if it is done or not so something an easy example for scenario based testing and then there is really the third aspect um, where the evaluators need their experience to check something for example if they do a source code review for really the high assurance uh, evaluation they take a look into the source code and see if you are um, really implementing things properly and uh, so their experience evaluators are needed so and then the second question, so of course the same applies for the operational environment. So an evaluator comes to your site and sees uh, uh, your server rooms uh, equipped with a locker and uh, can only the administrators have access to it. And is there a proper, proper logging, uh, logging of who uh, assessed the server room or the systems itself? So an experienced evaluator will check all those criteria based on the test specification or the evaluation specification. Everyone is warmly invited to become an evaluation facility. So, of course, in the first place, all the members or some of the members of our working group certifications um, want to do this job, want to become IDS evaluation facilities. Why? Because they have worked on this for years and years, put a lot of experiences in there, and uh, they believe, they truly believe that this is important and required for the future of the data economy. So, they want to become um, evaluators. <clears throat> but it's not enough to be uh, a member of the working group certification to become evaluation facility. So as part of the evaluation uh, of the certification scheme, uh, there is also an approval scheme for evaluators. So you have to show that you're capable to conduct, <clears throat> sorry, to conduct all those evaluations. Um, so a clear scheme, what you have to bring, in the meaning of, for example, certificates that you already have for a quality management, for example, um, and that you have the proper knowledge, the proper experience to really conduct those evaluations. And this is, again, what we now start to do in the certification body, that uh, there is something simple like an approval form um, um, where you can um, request to become an evaluator, 
Um, and there is this uh, clear scheme, what you have to show and what you have to do. So it's open for everyone. Everyone who has a proper experience and the proper knowledge can become IDS evaluation facility. Again, uh, as a neutral and independent company or body to conduct the evaluation as specified in our rules. I hope this clarified the questions. Uh, if not, uh, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian, so much. And now we can go uh, ahead with Natalia. And if there are any other questions in the chat, I will have a look in the meantime. And uh, after the input of Natalia, we might have time to discuss this. Okay, Natalia, please. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Sebastian and Lars, for this insight uh, on the background of the certification. Um, and um, yeah, I will clarify also a little bit more of this question that has been asked. And um, yeah, I will give you insight on the practical side of the certification, uh, which means how to get IDS certified. And yeah, let me explain this with a slide. Um, as uh, Sebastian and Lars has already explained, um, the certification body is currently in place and the certification body is ready to approve such evaluation facilities. Uh, both of them or, uh, already explained that we have some evaluation facilities in the starting blocks, but uh, we are open for any application from any country um, to become evaluation facilities. So um, the steps you have to take to become an approved IDS evaluation facilities. Uh, first of all, you have to contact us at the support office uh, and we will consult you and we will guide you through the whole um, approval process that you will be in the end an approved evaluation facility. Um, as Sebastian uh, said, there is an application form where you have to show that you are capable of all the evaluation processes um, and you will have to apply formally to, yeah, to become this evaluation facility. And afterwards, um, the certifi certification body will check this um, application and then also uh, go with you through the evaluation process. So in the end, you will be uh, an approved evaluation facility. And yeah, once we have this evaluation facilities in place, both for the core components and also for the operational environment, you as an organization, as an applicant, can apply to certify your components or your operational environment. And also here, the first step would be contact us as the support office and we will guide you also through this process. We will explain you which, um, uh, which partners we have, what are the evaluation facilities, um, how to apply, how to choose, and uh, we will help you to find your perfect partner for this. Um, then you will have to, to participate in an onboarding session with your evaluation facility and there every step will be cleared up and you will receive something like an individual audit roadmap. Um, and yeah, after this, the evaluation facility will start this process and collaborate with you, collect all the necessary information they need so that your core components or your operational environment um, can achieve the IDS certificate in the end. So, but we have heard that not every evaluation facility is right now ready. Um, so you have a little bit time as an applicant uh, to prepare for the IDS certificate. Um, so you can, for example, participate in the IDS plug fest where developers meet each other. They can discuss several topics and you can, of course, test your components. Um, also, you can participate in the integration camp, which is organized by our member SQS. And uh, they will also test your components. And um, also, you can conduct the IDS ready assessment within a workshop, which is offered by Fraunhofer Institute. And yeah, to sum this up and to bring it to the first step that has to be undertaken is um, you have to become an IDS evaluation facility by applying now at the support office. And as already said, we will guide you through this process. Yes, now I would uh, hand over back to Thorsten yeah, to the question. Yes, thank question. you. Thank you, Natalia, for this explanation. And it always needs a couple of seconds uh, until the camera provides uh, my picture again. So, um, OK, thank you so much, uh, Natalia. I think um, the process and also the backgrounds uh, described by um, Sebastian in detail um, are clear now. And yes, we have uh, time, some 10 minutes left of this webinar. Um, to answer some questions or to explain 
or provide explanations on this or that um, topic. So if there are any questions from the participants, feel free to use the chat function, the question and answer function, um, or simply speak up, uh, unmute your mic. Um, I don't know, Andreas, if this is automatically possibly possible or if we have to allow it, um, but I think uh, we will manage it if there are any questions. Don't be shy, <laughs> or we only have uh, experts in the webinar today, uh, which are already very close to launching coalition and certification discussion. Then uh, I, uh, it would be the case that we are maybe ready with the webinar a couple of minutes earlier than expected. But let us wait some more moments to guarantee that we are not missing any questions or any inputs. Sebastian Olas, are there any topics from your side which might be oh no there was one there was one there's one question. I heard someone. Uh, uh, yes so now I have here um, a question from uh, Erkuden from Technalia. Um, is the certification body a part of IDSA company. Sebastian, this goes to your direction. First, Erkuden, IDSA is not a company. It is an association. <laughs> <laughs> I just it's wanted not... to get this question back to you, Torsten, to answer exactly <laughs> this one. <laughs> yes. Um, so, as Torsten already mentioned, um, IDSA is not a company. It's an association, a charitable uh, association, uh, a non-profit uh, association. Um, and yes, for the time being, it's a uh, part uh, of the IDSA Association. Um, and it's a good question. Uh, one could ask why um, are we are taking care of this? Why are we? Why should we act as a certification body? Um, typically we shouldn't do. Um, there are neutral bodies in the different uh, states of the European Union. Um, I always forget uh, the Spanish one, but someone later on could help me out. In Germany it's a world famous DAX, um, the accreditation body. And um, so we have to go to such bodies with our certification scheme, let it be approved there so that they can do those jobs. But this is time consuming. This will take again some time to put our certification scheme there in place. On the other hand side, um, we have a lot of companies, uh, of data providers and potential data users that ask us to speed up. So this is a little bit of a dilemma. Provide fully trust by have really a neutral and independent body managing our certification scheme on the one hand side and on the other hand side to speed up to get something implemented and up and running. And this is why we decided to create an intermediary solution for that. Um, so the IDSA head office um, will have a, or has now a dedicated kind of department uh, that acts as a support organization to really set up all those essential services including certification body but also enabling uh, the other essential services like the dynamic attribute provisioning service a participant information service um, and also a certificate authority so this is now our task and we will be very, very glad uh, if we can provide this, these tasks to the free market as soon as possible. But to enable it now, we are taking this duty. Thank you. Thank you, Sebastian, for this answer. And then we have another question from uh, Jens, Jens Peitsch. Uh, he asks, how long does a certification take and how long is it valid? Well, um, I might answer the second part of the question first, because I know the answer. It's valid for two years. And uh, so how long the certification process, uh, yeah, uh, how much of time is used for that? Well, to be honest, I don't know. Uh, we have some experiences because we have piloted um, the IDS certification a few years ago already. Um, then we had these IDS readiness, sta readiness statements, um, which is a similar process really. And uh, well, it takes some time and it depends how well you are prepared. So um, in general, it's an audit and the audit itself could be done in something like one to three, uh, one to three days in general. Um, but 
of course you need preparation time. Uh, you have to prepare your component or your operational environment accordingly, prepare the documentation properly so that the evaluators can um, work fast. And so this is something like the variable, uh, how good you are prepared. Uh, the better you are prepared, the faster will be the certification done. So typically it could be done in really um, a few weeks, I would say, and is then valid for two years. And then you can receive a reapproval for that. Um, and let's see in the future uh, how long it will really take. But uh, as already said, there are various steps to prepare yourself for the certification. We do have Plugfest um, for the developers, for the core components to really step into it, to get prepared. We have the integration camp as a next stage to get a little bit even more uh, yeah, more feedback and more control on this. It is conducted by SQS. Uh, and we are very happy about that, that those things are in place. And we do have the ideas readiness statements. So the evaluators that will eventually evaluate you can prepare there uh, on a consulting basis to support you here. Thank you, Sebastian, um, for this um, answer. Then we have uh, another question here from Anil uh, Tukmayali. Um, at one point, will there be any levels for the companies being certified? What I mean by levels is rating the companies by their security levels, such as one star, two star, three star or so. Yes. Um, so a direct rating is currently not foreseen. So we do have um, the security profiles. Um, and the assessment profiles um, to have something like a, a star rating. So that really shows how trustworthy you are, um, but not rated by the data users. So are you a good data provider or not, or not a good data provider? So that, that is not what the um, evaluation facilities do. do. They have a, really a strict a set of rules of criteria to work on um, and so there is something like such a rating there are different levels uh, or security profiles in place um, but there is additionally one feature or one component in the ids reference architecture model the so-called dynamic trust uh, management um, that uh, does something similar um, the idea here is really to monitor the behavior uh, of a participant or of a component in the IDS uh, and to see if something went wrong. For example, uh, if you do a certification every second year, then of course something happens in between. And if there is a known vulnerability or security issue in your system, then we want to be able to detect this and want to provide this information as more dynamic monitoring information to the participants that you're currently dealing with. So then you would be aware. So basically, this is a very trusted uh, participant, a very trusted connector that I'm talking to, but currently it has an issue. So, and I am able to decide um, if I want to share data under these conditions or if I will wait until those conditions are cleared again. Um, but to be honest, this concept is not completely in place today. We are working on this and it's neither completely specified nor implemented today. Um, and everyone who is willing and interested to work on such things, to bring these concepts up in the IDS, you are warmly invited to join our work here. Thank you, Sebastian. So I think um, these are the questions we have had in the chat. Um, well, we have some three, four minutes left. Uh, are there any questions, Lars and Sebastian? This is what I wanted to ask originally before the chat started uh, to be filled, um, which you might have witnessed from other um, people or organizations participating in the different certification level uh, workshops. Maybe there are typical questions which are not raised in your inputs and not raised in the, uh, in the chat right now. Uh, then we would have two or three more minutes time to um, talk on these uh, potential questions or topics. If this is not the case, no problem. Well, um, I think this this was a very uh, elaborate um, uh, explanation on, on the issue of certification. Perhaps I would, uh, so I, I would like to stress once again the, the next steps. So um, Natalia um, did it already great. Um, so um, what, what we so we were deriving from the participants uh, or from the attendees in the, in the webinar 
uh, I, I see two groups. So um, in the first, um, we now want to um, finally appoint the evaluation facilities. Um, so Sebastian mentioned we have already uh, five uh, of them uh, which we are talking about. So we will announce them in, in a short time. So then any user can approach those evaluation facilities in order to well, perform the certification process. Um, so everyone who feels like being an evaluation facility, get in touch with us. We can uh, start working immediately. Uh, and then those who feel that they are users and that they either want to build a component uh, on its own which shall get certified, or if you are interested in purchasing a, a certified component from someone else, so if you are a user, then you will in a short time be able um, to well, benefit from the certification process and either buy a certified component from some companies out there which uh, provide those, uh, or if you are interested in uh, getting a component certified, um, you can uh, do it in a short time. Today, already, you can get in touch with us. You can match or become part of the launching coalition, meet other companies which are already uh, acting and willing on this path of certification. Uh, you can exchange thoughts, prepare for certification, as Sebastian mentioned, and, uh, well, you can uh, also start immediately doing some actions and uh, then uh, still this year we will have the evaluation facilities in place and uh, then uh, also start with uh, certifying the, the components. Perfect. Thank you very much, Lars. So we are more or less ready, but there's one slide missing. I think it's an announcement because uh, there is another live session, an IDSA live session this week. Uh, it is uh, actually tomorrow at 11. Uh, so, um, uh, and it is quite interesting because uh, our colleagues from TNO from the Netherlands will share with us uh, the latest um, um, uptakes on their activities. And uh, Matthijs Punta will report about the supplier network, the smart supplier network um, in, uh, in the Netherlands, where really an interesting the sovereign data sharing environment is already put in place and working um, between various companies. So this will be very interesting. And also Franz von Ette will uh, share with us insights about the data sharing coalition, uh, which is a Dutch endeavor and very much aligned with ideas. So if you are interested, um, dial in again tomorrow. Um, and uh, if you do not have time, share it with your colleagues or with your um, with your partners uh, to um, follow this uh, ideas live session tomorrow. So that's it. It's 12 o'clock. I wish you a great day. Thank you for the um, uh, colleagues who gave input, Lars, Sebastian and Natalia, and also for the um, participants who raised their questions, uh, participated in the discussion. I wish you a great day and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye. 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 Goodbye.